how do people that don't believe in government, how can they be expected to efficiently run government when they don't believe in it? General Assistance Medical Care serves 35,000 Minnesotans with incomes of $8,000 or less. The program was eliminated in 2009 by the stroke of Governor Pawlenty's pen. In 2010, the legislature reenacted the program, but once again, it was vetoed by the governor. Not one Republican in the Minnesota House of Representatives voted to override Governor Pawlenty's veto of the bipartisan GAMC bill. Here to comment on that and what it says about Republican legislators is Tommy Johnson. Tommy is one of this program's associate producers, but is more widely known on AM 950 radios, Minnesota Matters, and on his Minnesota Progressive Project blog as Tuput Tommy Johnson. This conversation was recorded prior to the announcement of a deal between DFL leaders and Governor Pawlenty that could fund reduced medical safety nets for the poor over the short term. Tommy, what do you make of the House Republican flip-flop on that vote? I really wasn't surprised, Tim. And one of the reasons is a quote that then-majority leader Tim Pawlenty said in April of 2001. And this was published in the Aiken Independent newspaper. And then-majority leader in April 2001, Tim Pawlenty said, children that are the victims of failed personal responsibility are not my problem, nor are they the problem of our government. You're not making that up? I am not making that up. I, when I heard it, I verified it with the newspaper. Yes, it, it was, that was published in the newspaper. It, it really doesn't surprise me. What did surprise me was the amount of the flip-flop because I believe the original vote was 120... I, would th I think it's 125 to 9. It, it broad broad uh, bipartisan. And a couple days later, Governor Pawlenty leans on the Republicans because he's trying to get nominated to the, by the support of the right wing of the Republican base. And you have like 38 Republicans that voted for it before they voted against it. And Tim, that really is unconscionable. But when you put that back into perspective of children that are victims of failed personal responsibility are not my problem, nor the problem of our governments, is it really a surprise? Name some names. Who, who, who uh, what Republican legislators fit into that category? Well, Marty Seifert, for one, who's running for governor. Uh, okay. Took a strong stand and voted for it, and then turned around and voted to uphold the, the veto. Here locally, Jennifer Loon voted for it before she voted against it. Keith Downey? Sure, yeah. The problem that we see in the Republican Party today, Tim, is they consider themselves Republicans first and Americans and Minnesotans second. Well, you've been out and about, haven't you? been going to some of these Republican conventions and uh, have kind of a look-see at what's going on? I have, Tim. I've covered three of them. I covered 49 up in Andover, where the Republicans have a 10-year state senator, Debbie Johnson, and they endorsed a newcomer because apparently Senator Debbie Johnson was not conservative enough. I, I had the uh, proposed resolutions from 49, mm -hmm. and one of the things that that grabbed me on there is they were calling for a, a contract that the candidates would have to pledge allegiance essentially to and that they would also have to pledge that they would support the Constitution as originally written. Now that means before the Bill of Rights. That's back when black people were three-fifths of a person and were slaves. Sounds like uh, uh, Gingrich's contract on America. Yes, it, it really does. Did that resolution passed the contract incident. I don't know. Okay. I can't get an answer. Uh, anybody give you any static about being there? At the Eden Prairie Convention last Saturday, it was uh, pretty much they read the riot act to me and told me if I didn't behave, they'd toss me. And then one gentleman, uh, and I, I hope he was joking, but said that no, uh, I know where the bowels of the basement are and. They'll never find you if you don't behave. So what happened out in Eden Prairie? Was it more of the same as you found up in Andover? It was not a very uh, welcoming uh, environment, so I left. Okay. I, I heard uh, Eric Paulson essentially say that I voted against everything, so vote for me. Tommy, i got to say I'm depressed uh, when you uh, tell me about the, the ideologues that, you're, uh, that you ran into at these conventions. Uh, 
Can you strike a contrast uh, between the individuals that you saw, perhaps uh, uh, thinking about the candidates the Republicans are going to put up and the candidates that you know that the DFL is going to run in the upcoming elections? I can. Uh, and Tim, I look at it real simple. It's the Democratic candidates have a there but by the grace of God go I looking out for people that aren't at the table, looking out for the less fortunate, having compassion. The Republican candidates I'm seeing are, it, it's... Pull up the moat. Pull up the moat, pull up the boat, pull up the ladder. I've got mine, it's sorry for you, I'm, I'm sorry that you don't, but good luck on you. Is it completely anti-government on the Republican side? It is, and that's the hardest thing that, that I don't understand. How do people that don't believe in government how can they be expected to efficiently run government when they don't believe in it? Well, we've seen uh, uh, Minnesota and nationally that they can't. And uh, I guess it's incumbent upon us to make sure they don't get into office. Well, uh, between you and me, let's hope we get it accomplished sooner rather than later. Tommy, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. You bet.